Hi, I'm Anna Williamson, and this is the Experian Cost of Loving podcast, where we're going to be having a serious chat about all things romance and money. Lewis, now the bigger earner than me. Yes, I am. (laughs) I think it should be normal within the UK for an adult to be able to run a flat on their own. Woo me. Excite me. (laughs) You get a little battered sausage, and off you go. (laughs) I've been single so long, I don't even know what it's going to have a go back. (laughs) The biggest red flag in a relationship. And he'll be buzzing that, I just said that. Hello and welcome to the Experian Cost of Loving podcast with me, Anna Williamson, and we are delving into the world of relationships with a financial twist once again today. And a bit of a hard-hitting topic we're going to be covering today, but a really, really important one and one that I know affects millions of people and I would say a vast majority of my client roster and that is financial breakups. When we've been in a relationship, when we've been dating and our finances as well as our love lives are intertwined and then suddenly we hit the skids and we go, how on earth are we going to break up in all ways? And the financial breakup is a huge one, which we know through all our research experience is something that is affecting a lot of young people in particular. Now, of course, I cannot talk about this by myself because that would be very boring and very one-sided. So to help me today uh, and to shed some light on their experiences of relationships, of finances, financial breakups, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. We're going to we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> I like it. We're gonna, yeah, we are. We're go- are you ready for this? I'm ready. Good, I'm good, ready. good, because we know this is going to help. Broke so a little sweat people. now, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit mean, worried. Yeah. <laughs> It is, of course, the incredibly talented, incredibly handsome, incredibly wonderful Curtis Pritchard, uh, TV personality and professional dancer. Oh, and just all yeah. round nice bloke. Oh, stuff, Anna. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, it's, really. Good to be on here. Thanks it's, for bringing it, me on. Pleasure, honey. It's, well, it's about time we had a jolly good catch up over your love life. I was going to say, I haven't seen you in so long. And the last time was in a big mansion and I didn't quite find love, did I? It's good to have you here because, say, you, you've got so much to talk about. And uh, you are honestly one of the, one of the good eggs in, in life. I'm awful at taking a compliment. I don't know what to say now. Thank you, Anna. You've not learned anything from yeah. me. It's accept that compliment. I know, yeah. yeah. Well, Curtis, it's so nice to have you here, hon, because, I mean, let's be honest, uh, you sort of found fame in a, in a strange old way through mm. your love life, yes, yeah. really, uh, with Love Island. But you're so much more than that. You know, you've, you've, you've grown and blossomed even more over the years and can't wait to, um, to hear the wealth of, of knowledge and experience. I know you're going you're gonna to give this episode on financial breakups. Um, and then, no pressure. Yeah. I know, right? And only, and only my second guest, guest, uh, equally beautiful and wonderful with fabulous teeth, might I say, oh, um, author, pod- she really does actually, now that you've just said that, yeah. I've actually been whitening them before my birthday, so thanks. Oh, <laughs> is it a special birthday coming up? It's my 30th. Well, congratulations. Oh. Thanks guys. Anoni, um, author, podcaster and influencer, lovely to have you here as well. Uh, are you ready to, uh, to, to talk about love lives and financial breakups? I'm so ready. If there's one thing I can do, it's talk about literally absolutely anything. So. <laughs> And I'm well versed in this. <laughs> well, <clears throat> this is what we're going to talk about today. I mean, it's a hard hitting one, financial mm. breakups. Uh, and some people might think, well, you know, why, why do we need to talk about this? Why is it important? Uh, it's important because. We're in a recession. Right. We're <laughs> yeah, in a cost times of crisis. Tough. Right. And we know throughout doing this series how expensive dating is, mm. you know, the debt people are getting into, into when it comes to dating, but also people are getting into serious amounts of debt when it comes to breaking up. Mm. Um, typically, around around a thousand pounds um is, is i think it's more than that you know anna mm. like i was speaking to a couple of people like one of my best friends has just gone through a serious breakup they got a house together they had a mortgage together and everything and roughly it's costing him over about six thousand pounds to break up with his wow. other half it's very 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 up and i was talking to somebody else as well bearing in mind these guys had a bit more money to be fair but it's ended up costing them eighty thousand pounds to break up th- through a relationship good gosh do you know can you shed any more light on that because i mean yes, yes straight on in i think i think you're right i mean this these are the Experian research um statistics that, that we've got but as you say it's so much bigger than mm-hmm. that. I mean, 80 grand. I mean, yeah. what what's that situation? It's when you're coming into, um, do you have a prenup, different situations like right. this as well, which go into it. But the main costs are, for example, if you get a joint mortgage on a house, you've got a big house, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you're breaking up. Now, what are you going to do with that mortgage? Obviously, you're going to have to split up here. Now, you're going to either have to remortgage yourself 
on the house, which is going to have to cost you double what you've been paying. There, all of a sudden, you've got an extra 50, 60, 100 grand added on. Right. But if you can't afford to do that as well, then you're going to be losing your house and you've got all of these lawyer's fees that you have to go through. Right. You've got the early tenancy um, like fines that you have to break up through. Mm. You've got all of these different situations and they slowly add up. Lawyers end up costing a £1,000 themselves in situations like that. And that's where it becomes so serious and so real. Right. Right. And no, this is no. one of the hard factors. Yeah, it, it really is. And you say you chuck in lawyers because obviously emotions are involved in a yes. breakup. And we'd like to think it can be as um, compromised as, okay, you take this, you take that. But it's not when emotions no. are involved. And typically in a relationship, there might be one that's instigated it mm -hmm. over the other. There might be foul play, at yeah. play. Um, people are perhaps not in the most reasonable frame of mind. And, you know, you, you mentioned their prenups, Curtis. And I think that's really interesting because there's a lot of um red tape around I how know, effective yeah. they are in the UK or not and but I remember when I um, bought my house with with my husband and you go through you know with the solicitors well are you going to be tenants in common are you, you know in what and, and you want to you want to still romanticize this life that you've got and this joint mortgage and everything else but it's a huge weight but and it's it sounds very unsexy to to start thinking well we have to think practically in terms here what if we divorce um but and i remember us having i disagree that. with the prenup though to be fair so, I, yeah. I disagree with Do the you? prenup i think if you are old money then perhaps if like you've got family money in this mm. and big wealth then and somebody's coming into that perhaps have a prenup but if not you're starting off a relationship in a very nasty way i feel sometimes oh interesting if you one. think you're really going to be hard. together anyway then what does it matter having that yeah. prenup do you know what well, I mean? as in like okay. so you can frame it in a way that's like actually having the prenup it's just a little bit of insurance around whatever i do agree with that because if i am with somebody my money's their money either way and then if they break up well then it isn't their money and should they take yeah. half of it i don't know but i just think it starts the situation and the relationship off on an awkward basis in a bit like are you planning on breaking up? No, right. not I, really. I and think this is what this conversation is kind of about because mm -hmm. you have to have that realistic attitude going into relationships now, I think, mm -hmm. because if we look at like divorce rates and stuff, yep. like the likelihood of every relationship lasting forever is one really low. It's one in it's two. It's a lot lower now, and, yeah. And I, but I get, and, I, and I get this. I think this, this is the point of this episode because... I think that's because we all want more dopamine and stuff now. Probably, so, so yeah. So we end up actually getting bored quicker. No, I elements. think it's probably more to do with Women, women having more rights and being able to leave abusive or difficult relationships compared to years okay. ago when people would probably be stuck in Great partnerships. Yeah, you probably got that. more freedom. There has definitely been a generational shift in choice and opportunity, but then we do know the statistics around. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about this in a later episode. Actually, around um, financial abuse, you know, is is very is very high still, particularly f for women. It obviously does uh, exist for men as well. We have to be very clear on that. But I mean, look, I mean, just now framing it around the statistic that we found at Experience. So when we research people. Nearly one in five, okay, so that's it's 19% have been in a relationship that ended due to financial troubles. I mean, that is a huge statistic. So to your point, Curtis, I get it. I, th I think, I mean, I'm married. I'm married because I intend my marriage to last. Yes, I'm not yeah. going to say it's roses all yeah. the time. Um, and not we, everything is, you know is, is mean? it? Not yeah. everything is. And there is disparity around finances a lot of the time. But the intention was to get married. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm with you on the fact that I think the intention should start out on that right foot of, well, look, we're in this together as a partnership as a team so what's mine is yours what's yours is mine but then I do also I very much do think an insurance policy as to your point Anoni is a sensible route nowadays given this experience statistic of one in five breakup due to financial issues and as unattractive as it sounds and as it feels the stats don't lie People yeah. are breaking up because they're having problems with finances and then we are in all kinds of hot water. And then to your point there, Curtis, one of your mates is in 80 grand's worth of debt because yeah. of breaking yeah. up. And it comes down to a lot of mental health as well. For oh. me, knowing as a male, I want to support the people around me and I'm sure females as well, you want to support the people around you. And if you don't have the money to do that or live the life that you want and you think your other half lives as well, it becomes a very big mental drain on yourself. And then I always say, if you're not happy in yourself, a relationship will never work. So if you don't love yourself, you can't love somebody else. I, hey. I wonder where you learned this from. I mean, <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm pro on the right oh, of me yeah. over here. I'm proud of you. But, but you're right, yeah. you're right. And then this all adds in 
into it, yeah. It, it makes it, it hard. It, the whole thing just becomes this sort of quagmire of, of, of stress. Mm. And as you say, and I, I know so many uh, clients, uh, professionally, but privately, who and also just personal friends who are going through breakups. And you know, take take the emotions out of the equation of, you know, I'm sad because my relationship's broken down. I mean, that's that's one whole area I do think seems to get forgotten in all this. Because in my experience from seeing people going through this now, it is, as you say, the overwhelming stress and downright fear in a society we're living in at the moment, which is financially just very stretched for everybody. It's almost impossible. We're going to get onto this in a bit to to fathom how we can financially deal with these breakups. I mean, and only what what's your have you got any personal experience yourself in financial uh, breakups or difficult relationships with finances or indeed anyone you know? So I I had a breakup with my first serious boyfriend that I ever lived with and luckily when the actual breakup happened it was all quite neat and we did this thing where like he paid me back for some of the furniture he wanted to keep and we did it all really well and it was very kind of like friendly and nice but the problem came when I then wanted to carry on living kind of the standard we've been living as a couple and I thought well I'll just rent a flat that's like the same amount which I can afford I think and then very quickly you get this kind of single tax element which is you're paying double the rent double the amount of bills right. everything's more expensive and I think we don't always factor that in afterwards it's suddenly like god it feels feels manageable when you first look at it mm. and then actually you you don't realize how much you save being in a couple and I think on the flip side this that idea as well of you know it being cheaper to live with a partner forces people into living with people too soon as well like in the cost of living crisis you're thinking I can't afford my rent so maybe I'll move in with this partner yeah then you're kind of living with someone that you don't necessarily want to be with and then you have the financial breakup the other end so I think just it's all a, a bit of a mess in terms of finances dictating how relationships work which is really sad it's a massive commitment though as well moving in with somebody like i i would suggest that in my opinion i haven't ever bought a place with somebody or moved in with somebody but how i would try and look at it is is not what both of our wages can afford it would be more what can you sort of afford on your own Mm -hmm. not because i'm planning on breaking this up but who knows one of us may lose our jobs one of us may do this and then one person may have to be paying for that mortgage anyway or that lease so i would always try and look at getting a property that you can afford on your own then doing that together because then in a worst case scenario Mm. even if you break up or not break up you can still fund it from one person's wages yeah it's kind of living within one's means isn't it and i think this is sort of the whole point of experience as well really helping people to manage their finances and being realistic I think Mm. what we've experienced over this podcast you know other episodes are just these unrealistic expectations living standards um, living on credit you know and, and and I and I and I do think particularly generationally our generation is really in trouble you know, oh, a thousand be- be- percent because Anna. to yeah. your to your point Curtis exactly it's if I can actually afford or us as a couple or I'm, I'm thinking about being in a relationship to afford this you know medium medium standard small standard you know just just what I need but we don't because we all see these amazing we, big exactly. things and we want we're this we're all stretching we ourselves yeah. to what we want and then we find ourselves in this absolute problem when suddenly it all blows up and we go I don't need a five bedroom I've, yep. I've seen this happen actually someone that I um I knew they she and him they were in their mid 20s uh he was doing quite well um they bought a four five bedroom house new yeah. build house for what, 600 grand down in the southeast yep. you know it's a lot I mean firstly I'm thinking how the hell do you afford that <laughs> I mean, seriously, but none of my business. Um, but so they bought this house. There's two of them in a five bedroom house. All, all lovely and wonderful for the first six. Quite a few spare rooms there. Right. Yeah. But six months later, unfortunately, the relationship ended. You know, there was cheating. There, there were a lot of foundational issues mm-hmm. in that relationship. But again, it was kind of pie eyed. You know, let's buy this massive house. But he owned the house. Um, so then the young lady found herself in a position where, well, he didn't want the house anymore but she couldn't take on the mortgage on that five bedroom house. So she moved out, had to go back into her parents' home. He then obviously, like you were saying a a little bit earlier on, then was landed with all of these penalties for having to get out of his mortgage. And I think, yeah, it costs them to then get rid of the house. It costs them £35,000. That's what I mean. I would say that I was renting a one bed flat and as an almost 30 year old woman, I think, it should be normal within the UK for an adult to be able to rent a flat on their own. I think the difficulty is in the cost of living crisis, when I say living with a partner makes it cheaper, 
we're splitting the rent of a one bed flat together yeah. as a couple rather than I'm right. not talking about buying houses or spending hundreds of thousands of pounds. I mean, the the sad, I think the difficulty comes in where for the general people, it doesn't matter if you're in a really well paid, successful job in the city, the majority of people from age from 25 to 35 can't afford to even rent a property on their own. Yeah. No. And so I think that stress from the cost of living is what then increases this tension with the financial breakups and rushing into relationships. Um, I would say the majority of people in my age bracket don't own properties, especially in London, yeah. Yeah. and won't. And so I think the financial breakups tend to be about like getting out of tenancy agreements early right. or kind of even just getting, even not even like big ideas or grandiose, just even getting like a place of your own rather than sharing like a six bed flat share. Do you know what I mean? Right. Which is quite depressing, but I think that is the current climate no, for most I, I, people yeah, living in Yeah, I, I, think, I think you're right. And until the average salary, the average salary is around 30 grand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I mean, that's not going to get you much down no. in the Southeast. I mean, it, 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 in different parts of the country, you know, you're going to get a little bit more bang for your buck. But as you say, the the uh, easier and more sensible option, particularly when you, as it feels in that, I'm in love, I'm in lust, <laughs> you know, we're in the honeymoon phase. Oh, do you know what? As you say, let's cut our losses. Let's move in yeah. together. Boom. We also then get to hopefully have a little bit more spare cash to finance our maybe social lives. trial periods are the best thing then. Curtis, this trial maybe periods. The best thing. Like <laughs> trial a six periods. Month trial period where you know you can end the lease after six months. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. if it breaks up in that three, four month situation, you can at least afford that last little bit. And then you can come out of it nice and easy and you've not put yourself in too much debt risk or worry it's i think i just i think the more and more we've been you know doing this podcast and talking about this the the importance of due diligence is so important and i'd say i i'm 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 so one for either side of the fence because i am i'm a big fan of romance i'm mm. a big fan of love um there is nothing more unsexy than say than entering a relationship when you should be swinging from chandeliers and going <laughs> right can we just sit down yeah. now and discuss uh you know what the, what it could possibly look like you know when th if and when things go wrong but to your point and I mean, but 50% of relationships do. Yeah. So yeah. again, it, it is it is that fine line between just being sensible and looking after your own interests. I think that's really, really what it comes down to first. So in reality, we need to bring it to schools really, don't we? And like we do. education is the main thing from a younger age yeah. to, let, mm -hmm. to, to make people realize how to use their money smarter and how to make their money make money for them and how to budget and save. And I think that will then change a lot of the younger generation as they get older and cause, well, cause a lot less stress. Because, to, to your, sorry, to your point of that, because did anyone ever teach you no, nothing. about no, finances? Nothing. No. nothing or relationships? No. Well, that, that was going to be my second point, because finance is one thing, but also, I'm a hopeless romantic, but I've had like <laughs> 20 of the ones. <laughs> Same, So we like, all? by the experience of knowing that like not every relationship lasts, I have started to be like, I love you, and I think we're going to be together forever. At the same but. time, <laughs> I've said this before, and I've done this before, so maybe let's kind of feel like we've got some safety parameters in there. And like, a lot of my friends who are women my age may be looking to buy or share with a partner. They've also maybe had a big breakup in their late 20s. And so now they're going into this new, more serious relationship, again, being like, right, I'm gonna have contracts written up of if someone moves out. Yeah. And it is unsexy, but it's also really practical. Mm -hmm. And you just never know what will happen. And I think being taught about relationships in school, also learning that you know not every relationship that ends is a failure and that not every time you're with someone for a certain amount of time, it doesn't mean you have to be with them forever. Do right, you know what I mean? I right. think that's also a good but, but lesson. It, 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 I agree with you. And I think it, it's, it's an empowering lesson. Mm. It is an empowering lesson. And we can still find love for love, but we can just do it more sensibly. And as we know, there is nothing more sexy than being financially savvy. Oh, I mean, a thousand. Truly. Honestly, yeah, yeah, someone yeah. that is saving for something, we talked about loud budgeting in a previous episode, someone that is proudly saying, I can't afford to go out on the Raz on Friday because I'm saving up for something else later in the year. That's sexy. That's someone thinking with their own brain, not just being driven along for the ride, going, fine, I'll just, you know, spank 200 and quid up the wall. And it feels really good as well it because I've done the spanking 200 pound on, well, We've thousands of it. pounds on this and that. And, and I've watched my money go down and mm. down and down. Mm. And I'm paying a mortgage, a blimmin' expensive mortgage, to be fair, because everything's gone up in price. <laughs> I know, right? And I've realised that actually I've started budgeting now, giving myself spending money, only 500 pounds I've given myself a month to spend. I like And that. it is one of the most satisfying things i am writing down what i'm spending every single day now and i've never done it makes this. you more aware especially because i think with contactless you yes. can just tap 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 yeah. sometimes oh, i go out and i'm like money. i'll be like you spent Limited. 130 pounds in your car today i'm like but i just bought a kit cat which oh, yeah. what <laughs> how am exactly. i exactly yeah. go out you buy yourself a little treat i agree yeah.
Well, this leads me on to my next um, topic then, um, because uh, there's a recent article. I want to get your thoughts on this. So, recent article, and we've slightly touched on this already about mm-hmm. um, the pressures of living together, being together with that financial weight on top. Um, so, there's a recent article um, in the Independent that said that nearly uh, nearly sixty percent of people say the cost of living crisis has negatively impacted their relationship. Okay, so that's sixty percent. The cost of living has negatively... So that's huge. That Finances is, is mm-hmm. absolutely now, according to this article, is having that direct impact on relationships. Now, this is what I find really interesting. And we've slightly touched on it, but I want to delve into it more. 30% of people, so nearly one in three, admit they are only staying with their partner because they fear they can't afford to live by themselves. That's a scary fact, that. Isn't it? And it's an unsettling fact as well. I completely believe it, though. I, like, I, I have friends who say that, I experience it, and the people that I talk to online, people are like, oh, I don't really know if, I, if this is right, but I've got no other choice, yeah. which is really a terrible situation to be in, isn't but it? You do have another choice. There has to be. There's always another choice. Some because people... can't, you, can't you move back to your parents' house? And I know if you don't... Them. Or if you, very, if you have a good true. relationship, if, you've got them, yeah. if your work friends, accommodates you. Can't you things. try and ask a friend to stay there for a week and then another friend to stay but there for a it's week? It's like a long time, yeah. if you've, especially if you've built a home with someone, you've got furniture, you've got stuff. It's like, where does that all, how do you dismantle a whole life? It becomes the change is far scarier a yeah. prospect than suffering and putting up with what yeah. you've got. And I think this is a very dangerous statistic, actually. 30% of people saying that they are staying in their relationship within yeah. their home because they cannot afford to be out of it. I mean, that's that just going to end bad. Terrible for mental health, yeah. for self-esteem. Imagine the conflict between that. You're also limiting all possibilities of finding joy and love elsewhere, mm. all because you are handcuffed mm. financially. And I always and- say you have to go through a tough time to sometimes have a great time, but that isn't even going through a tough time to have a great time. That is, right. you're just putting yourself through a tough time there and there's no end to it. Right. And that's why I would say really try and get out of that scenario and don't think like that because it will be hard and it'll be blimmin' hard. And I don't want to say take a loan out, but if that's what you may have to do to just get yourself on your feet and then you can, if you have a job that can sort yourself out, pay that loan off slowly and make sure you do pay it off because the interest rates are incredible if you don't pay that right. loan And this off. is where Experian can be really helpful yes. at, at guiding in any form of doing that. But but actually, to your point, I think, I think exhaust every avenue you have in order to change your situation. Yes, yeah. And I'm a big fan of the old pros and cons list. And sometimes, you know, but some people do feel genuinely very trapped. Mm. And they're thinking, I, I just, let, let's say they don't have a family. They don't have a support network. You know, what do I do? Um, and it is a very desperate situation that people find themselves in. My husband and I do joke that it's too expensive to get divorced yeah. for exactly this reason. Because, I mean, I'd say we live quite modestly and within our means. Um, but equally, we know full well that if we weren't together, my God, I mean, thankfully, we do love each other enough. And whenever we have a bicker, we work <laughs> through it. But but we we are quite open with each other. That my I think goodness. that's good. That's probably why you got, I think that yes. open communication is part of the, the strength in a relationship. Right. And I think going back to the thing we were saying at the beginning about having those conversations about your finances beforehand or being honest with yourself might stop this happening later down the line because I do think people move it. I've genuinely seen this also, like getting to an age where you don't necessarily want to live in a house share. People are like, well, I'm just going to move in with him because it's cheaper. And then obviously I think that's when 10, five years later, you're like, oh my God, I didn't actually like them that much. So it's also like getting ahead of it. Yeah, and not getting in, but that's hard. I mean, I'm I'm maybe really depressing because I think it's also tricky. What do you do? Like the, the especially it's dire for some people right so now. So do you think you should talk between each other and tell each other exactly what you're both earning? I think you should. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and yeah. especially yeah. any debt, any credit card. Thousand percent. That is a, it's the biggest but, red yes. flag in a relationship, and, yeah. and we talk about this so much. It's, it's really kind of the, one of the main underpins of, of why we're doing the Cost of Loving podcast is debt. Yeah. You know, debt is an absolute relationship relationship killer yeah. and the transparency and the honesty around that is so important and we all make mistakes yeah. we get it like you said I wasn't really financially educated it sounds like neither are you guys schools certainly didn't I don't know if they do now no. but have not offered or, or, or um, uh, served up adequate financial education so we're all just re- really busking it and, and trying our best and when we try we make mistakes that's okay but you've got to be honest and transparent yeah. about yeah. it 
but it's expensive to break up. This is a real issue for for uh, married couples that have children that they cannot b financially break up um, outside the family home. So then there's a thing. Have you heard of nesting? Yeah, is it where the parent? The, the children, children stay put stay. and the parents move. It's really clever, right. I think. Yeah. I actually know parents that do this. So explain that again, sorry. So, so, it, it's... It, so in order to kind of not disrupt the children yeah. as much as possible, because obviously that's dreadful yeah. for any child yes. going to yeah, break 100%. up. Awful for parents too. Um, but it's now where, because parents can't physically move out into a second dwelling um, or... or they don't want to disrupt, <clears throat> they perhaps go and stay at a family member's house, one parent does. The children stay in the family they home. They still feel like they've got their home, yeah, their and hob. The, and, and the parents take turns to okay. come back oh, and live okay. into the house. So it's like one of them does half the yeah. week, then moves back into a friend's spare room. It actually makes so room. much sense rather than packing the kids off all the stuff and forget right. stuff. And then and, and it can actually, yeah. be, can actually be super effective. I mean, I work with couples that are going through uh, breakups um, and for financial reasons, they cannot go out and they may, may not even have a friend or a parent yeah. that they can you know jump on a sofa for three days of the week so they have to physically carve out a room in the house which is theirs to to have that separation and that autonomy but then living under the same roof i know more couples now that are divorcing and living together than i know that have moved out and divorcing yes, separately yeah. because they can't afford to and this is why it's so important to really shed light and empathy actually through through this podcast on look you know what we we really feel for you because you're not alone so many people are really struggling and then amidst all of that financial problems you're dealing with your emotions too mm. and you don't want to have massive rows and all of this it's a very difficult and tricky situation do you think a rainy day fund is good then <laughs> i believe in a rainy day fund from if you haven't started one i suggest you start one from today always a little bit of money just putting it aside it isn't your savings you know your savings are your savings it's for something going An wrong emergency fund, anything yeah. going wrong 100 percent would be a relationship 100 could be a house could be a leak could be a car whatever but i believe in that and i hadn't done that and i've started to do that now good you must do you, yeah. do, you do that i do that i have a thing where when i get and because my income's lumpy i'm sure you guys are the same we yeah paid randomly so i have so little pot yeah. and it siphons off yes yeah pot for my tax yeah. pot for my pot for my savings yes because if I have it in my account I will spend it yeah. so I yes. have to have it all taken away from me, me like same. a child for my vat, unless no. I can if I can see it I will spend it yeah. so I've had yeah. to yeah because yeah because yeah, now I have my I have my my savings my investments and my rainy day fund I completely I agree now. some people label people label it all kinds of things an escape fund yes. uh, yeah. there's a few more crass terms for it as well but I, I think essentially it's your own pot and I think again within a relationship and maybe if you're listening to this now you know and you're in a relationship hopefully things are going well but even if they they aren't my husband and I have done this we are um you know we've been married nearly 10 years but you know we have ups and our downs but we have been really transparent about making sure that because we feed our joint account obviously which mm. which pays for, for our family and our children but we have actually fun enough in, in the recent year in particular both openly said we need to be feeding our own private accounts more um, and readdressing that apportionment because not that we worry about splitting up but I think it just gives you that sense of security and autonomy and so then you have the right reasons to stay in that relationship we stay in this relationship because we love each other and we want to be together but we're not it gives you duty freedom bound. As well. right yeah. it's freedom it gives you choice we are not duty bound on or dare I say it, I mean, practice what I preach, working in this industry, becoming one of these statistics and people mm. that I know that are desperately handicapped with finances and not knowing what to do because they're stuck living with a partner they don't want to be living with, but they cannot afford to not. It's a problem. So finally, we've got some uh, listener questions. So are you ready to be uh, agony aunts and uncles? <laughs> these are the worst sometimes. I mean, the best, <laughs> the but best. the worst. The scariest, I should say, not the worst. If yeah. our advice is bad, we're sorry. You, you, you both <laughs> yeah. have very sage This is advice. all for entertainment purposes only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have sage advice because you live it. Look, and I think this is the whole point, right? We're all just human beings. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether we're celebrities or have mm -hmm. blue ticks or whatever. We all live all on the same rock. Exactly. Yeah. We all come into the world and go out in the world in the same way. Oh, it got morbid quick. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it did. And what, what we're trying to just you know, make this more accessible to everyone yeah. to say, please don't think that everyone wafting around on Instagram are millionaires and don't have to worry about debt. It's a fake it, life. It's a fake. Yeah. It's a highlight. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it is. We are well real. Said. Perfectly yeah. Said. Yeah. We're all paying mortgages. We're all worrying about xyz we're all stressing out when we see the heating bills go up we're all in it together right so we've had a question come in 
um, from a young lady and she says um, he owns the house and I can't afford to move out so what should I do Ooh. what would you say to that one it's a tricky one really isn't it um, well first of all if you do have parents can you fall back onto your right. parents and try and move back into your parents and then create this rainy day fund um, and create your savings and just build that up you may have to spend six months with your parents but if it's six months and then you can secure yourself for the future, that's the best thing. Unfortunately, if you don't have parents, maybe try friends. Try try doing something like that, seeing if you can share a place with your friend, you know, or rent out a bedroom for a cheaper price. Things like this, yes. if, you, if you can do that, uh, there, there are ways out of it, maybe. I agree. I think this is really tricky and this happens a lot. And we see it like more historically with women where you kind of move into a situation where you're living with a man and maybe you didn't have any like financial assets of your own. But then when it goes wrong, it's like it's a lovely thing when you're in it and then you're kind of right can be quite sticky. This is actually just like the person I was referring to earlier, which, which happened to exactly, her. Exactly. Yeah. And so and it's hard as well, because I agree, maybe your option would be to move home or like to find somewhere on spare room. And that is really hard because you're changing like you're probably your standard of living and like what you're used to. Um, but I think that that is probably your only option really unless I guess he would be happy to move out and have a tenant live there it depends it's really difficult to know without lots yes. of information lots about of information, it, yeah. I think it's really as well as trying to forget about your pride sometimes yes. in these situations because once you start to live a standard you don't want to drop down because you feel like you're coming back on yourself Right. but you have to do that sometimes forget about I have to show this life I have to do this if that's what you have to do in that situation to get yourself back on your feet Bloody do it. Y you have to Just do it. Just do it. Y you're, you're absolutely right. Because it, it's better off suffering now for, for six months or right. whatever longer than sorting yourself out. Because then even by doing that, even by if it feels like you taking learn. a step back, yeah, but you yeah. are making an active positive yeah. change for yourself and you have your independence mm. and your autonomy. You're not living in someone else's home where you are feeling helpless. As you say, you might not have the standard of living for a while, um, but you will at least have your pride, your dignity and the opportunity yeah. to then yeah. carve out what you want to do. I would it's even, so easy saying it though, so isn't it? I mean, <laughs> Doing it's so it's easy story. saying that. And, well, it's so easy. Well, I know from this young lady that I know, she really did not want to be living in her parents' box room. She mm. was living in a bougie five bedroom house uh, and she did not want to, you know, but I remember saying to her, well, it's just, it's a means to an end. Mm. And now, you know, she's about a year on and, and she's she's in her own place now and, you know, things are going better. She's got a better job, you know, and, and you know, th things are on the up. But I also think as well, I don't know really what's going on emotionally with this relationship, but I also, if there is any sort of reasonable behavior yeah. with the breakup, to have a really honest chat. And as you say, that might, that might that is a risk of being extremely vulnerable but saying, look, I am really, really worried here and scared because I don't feel like I hold any cards. I'm in your home, your finances. And one would like to think, and I know this is not always the case, that there is some level of compassion for the relationship you once had and the love you once had for each other to ask for his help in whatever way that might be. You know, yeah. is there anything he might be able to assist you with in order to help you both move on and, and, and split amicably so you don't feel so powerless I think this points back to your idea of the rainy day fund where it's so important that even if say you're living under someone else's roof and maybe you're not paying that much rent you still got to be setting aside that money in case yes. at a later date you know something happens or goes wrong I think you're either try and speak to the guy or the girl and see yeah. can, and it, can I stay in here for a little bit whilst I, I, I'm finding exactly. somewhere and then if he starts or she starts seeing somebody then you have to move out. but Exactly. Oh, and, and worst case scenario, we don't know the marital status or relationship status mm -hmm. it's legally, but, you know, if there are, you know, if you are in some way linked link, uh, linked legally with children or finances, and you know what, there are lots of um, free legal advice you can get. You could go to the Citizens so, yeah. Advice Bureau okay. or yeah. lots of lawyers will give a, a free 30-minute phone call yeah. Yeah. Um, just to give you a bit of, you know, heads-up advice. So there are things you can yeah. do, and I would probably get a little bit of third-party advice on that as well. Yeah. Um, and then the next question we had, um, how do you decide, oh, this is a tricky one, you've gone through this, Anoni, how do you decide who gets what furniture and joint possessions that you bought together after breaking up? Someone sent that in. Well, I, so uh, me and my partner bought all the furniture together half and half, but because I was like decorating both our half so taste, yeah. I was actually quite <laughs> pleased. Cut it in half. No, I basically was like, do you know what? I was like, you keep all of that. You just give me back the money for half. So he just paid me all the half. Because I was like, great, now when I move on my own, I'm going to do exactly how I want it. Yeah. So I just was like, <laughs> Didn't want that anyway. you keep it all. And then and I quite like that. But I think it depends how you paid for it. And we just did it really evenly. We paid half and half. Mm. So whoever wanted to keep whatever, you pay the other person 
the other half. But what happens if it's worn down and a bit like broken if you've been together for quite a long time? Well, I still think it's... Ra- I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, yeah. I get, but I think it was like we both bought it as it was together. Yeah. So whoever wants to keep it, yeah, yeah. you just keep it. But so as I said, I had a really amicable breakup. So yes, yes. that's probably quite yeah. unusual. And I do think if it's difficult and you want something the other person doesn't, I think that, again, it's that process of like letting go. Yeah, mm. but it is really it is really tricky. I, I know uh, somebody that uh, it happened to, and they literally everything she bought, she just took everything he yeah. bought, he kept. I mean, and I think that's literally a, like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's yeah. a very very sensible uh, way of doing it. I mean, it, you you rely on having a reasonable uh, yeah. partner um, or ex partner in in the process. I mean, same when my with one of my ex partner, um, I was just thinking, now oh, what did we do? We moved out, and again, yeah, it was just kind of who fancied what, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and we were quite reasonable about it and actually I I he did start getting a bit sort of pernickety towards the end and in the end I just thought you know what I, I really I'm like this <laughs> duvet set oh my god it's really it's <laughs> <that's> so <laughs> stupid no I am really, with you on this oh, Curtis, it was really gorgeous and it was quite expensive and I'm I'm a bit of a cheapskate I don't really spend much money on stuff like that but I'd really push the boat Bedding, out duvets Bedding. I'm with you Anna. right I'm with and it you. was really expensive and he really wanted to keep it and I remember thinking oh I really want that it's wrong. but I thought you know let it go let it go that thousand thread this count is, is mine what? I was I never about to say that exactly because when when you're going through the breakup as well, everything's emotions are heightened, and even if exactly. you're so amicable, you do start thinking like, "Well, I actually, you would never put that blah blah." And actually, years later, yes. uh, a you might not still have it anymore. You don't actually care. Your taste is going to change. Uh, yeah. You have to really think because I was like that. I was like, I actually, you'd never would have bought that. This is it. Like, you've got no taste. And yeah. Now I'm not like, actually hate that table. In <laughs> hindsight, it's horrible. You, didn't you, it? Yeah, you have to try and step your uh, emotion, drop your yeah. ego. Yeah, drop step your emotions one side. Drop your ego. Again, I remember thinking that Doobie, he doesn't even really like that. Do yeah, I, I really know. Like that. And you're furious thought, about it. I know, and I thought, well... You still are, I, I love yeah, it. I know, I know. That really I, hit a nerve. It, 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 <laughs> it, it, no, but he, it, the truth is, he probably did keep it to piss you off. Probably. Like, I genuinely think that yeah. that's... Probably. All of that really he, stupid he, stuff at the end. Yeah, he was a little more sore than I was about, about the breakup. So, but And I think even in, in that scenario, yeah, if, if one of you has instigated it and so the other one's a little reluctant in the breakup, I know someone that's going through a divorce like this, actually, she's she's the one that's instigated the divorce. It's amicable, but he's... I don't think I think he'd rather it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. And I've just said I think you're just going to have to be a bit extra kind. Yeah. So whatever he wants, if it softens it a little bit more for him, I think I think sometimes you do just have to, you know, tread that line. It's tricky, but like you say, if you're moving on anyway, it's stuff. Um and I think sometimes you just have to swallow your pride and and just accept, you know, if, what do you say? Pick your battles. Yeah. Pick your battles, yeah, in, you know, true. overall. And have you both done your due diligence on your current relationships with finances? Have you had those chats? My partner's very financy anyway, so useful. Cool. That's all. Yeah. And, up to date. And, same, and yeah. it's that, well, can I say, I mean, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you have been through it all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, are you, I mean, with your lovely lady now, have you been quite sensible about your finances? Yes, forward? 100%. And put it like this if she's with me for the money, well, she's only got 500 quid spending, <laughs> <laughs> spending oh, money a no, month. So, uh, have fun, darling. <laughs> 17 quid a day I think Wait, that is Wait does that extend to, I thought that was just for you like that 500 pounds a month but is that like if you took That's all I've got so I have to save so if I want to go out for dinner I have to, I'm going to have to save up from this 500 pounds a month in London on the prices that we're living on to then take her out for a date yeah and do you know what? I've genuinely, <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud of you. And uh, no matter what, I, I'm, I'm sticking to it. I'm, I'm so it. proud of you. Yeah. Honestly, she will, if you guys go the distance, which I hope you do, she will thank you for that. Because what a great foundation as a partner, as a potential dad, if you ever end up having children, to be that financially savvy. I think that's, I think that is sexy as hell, quite oh, frankly, cheers, Curtis. Anna, thank you. Yeah. I, I do. I, I'm I really proud of you. I believe with a smile on my face <laughs> now. Thank you. Yeah. I do. Because, well, yeah. look, I mean, but because so many people, you say, they splash in the cash, which mm. they don't even have. Yep. And so yeah. to have somebody like yourself, that is publicly saying I'm just being really sensible with my finances is you're such mm. a good role model um for that and, and and as are you and only you know as a woman as well just having having your ducks in a row financially it's really important that's what we're trying to teach people through this cost of loving podcast well thank and you I have very never much. been like that and that's why I'm doing it well, got to do it yeah we, we, we but like you said to. no one teaches us this at school so we're all figuring out we're learning it and it's mm. it's why us here at Experian, we are doing this podcast to help people learn yeah. without hopefully having to 
uh, have these short falls and hit the trenches like so many of us do. Mm. Thanks for having and us on. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah. us on. Yeah, yeah well, Just thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you for being it. So, I mean, I guess just by way of closure, what would you say have been your takeaways um, from today's episode on financial breakups? Make sure you talk complete finances through. If there's any, any debt situations, remember not all debt is bad debt, think of mortgage, things like this, but make sure you talk all debt situations through, talk what your earnings and what you can afford together through and make a rainy day fund not for a relationship just in case anything goes wrong i would say try and get rid of the shame whether it's shame about like not being able to afford something yeah. or like your debt like you said or a relationship not working i think a lot of times we let things spiral whether it's like money mm. or relationships yeah. go wrong because of shame yes and actually it's just a waste of your time and your partner if that's what the issue is yeah. so. and don't feel pressured to take people out to the most expensive restaurants no it's lovely, but bag of <laughs> chips like on a bed. Broke after it, yeah. If you get a nice little snog yeah. at the end of it. That's far better, I think. You know what? That actually is. That's Isn't more it? real. That Isn't really it? is. Yeah. It, one of my best dates, honestly. Keep a little battered sausage, and off you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, on that note, maybe we should end. <laughs> on that note, uh, brilliant, guys. Amazing advice from both of you and, and insight. And that, that's really what I've taken away from today. It's Financial breakups undoubtedly cause a lot of stress and anxiety, but it is a very common situation. So make sure you do your due diligence and have honest and open communication. And hopefully you have learned some very important and helpful top tips from listening to this episode. Next week on the Experian Cost of Loving podcast, we're going to be talking all about red flags and financial abuse. So we'll see you then. Experian works in partnership with a number of charities and organisations to provide access to financial guidance and support. So if you've been affected by any of the issues discussed in this episode, then you can reach out to one of our partners for free independent support at Step Change, Citizens Advice or National Deadline. <laughs>